great piece of wisdom that I think is from Underbelly Season 1 with that guy that I think ended up being on House Husbands. Wow, what a career. He was saying, or his character at least, Carl Fitzwilliams maybe? Could be a footy player? Whatever, the point is he was from Melbourne. So it either was going to be a drug lord or a footy player. Who else lives down there? The piece of wisdom was, doesn't matter where you, where you are, what matters is where you're going, I think is something along the lines of that particular quote. Let me just try and say that again. Doesn't matter where you are, what matters is where you're going. Critical. It's a huge decision in life. It's not even that big. Let me rephrase that. It's not a huge decision, it's just that no one makes that decision. Very few people in life make a decision of where they're going. They have this leaf in the wind mentality about life. Of, oh, I just went into that job over there at a bar room. Hmm. Okay, so they kicked me out because they got no fucking loyalty whatsoever. So, okay, I just moved into this little temp position in an office. Oh, this sucks. Oh, I'm going to go find myself in India. I've got no money. Story of your life? If you're watching this, probably. Like the video if it was. Subscribe. Sign up to Patreon with the last two dollars you have left. You povo begging Indian cunt. Yeah? You see where I'm going with this? Because I am going somewhere. And that's what's important. It's a muscle. It's definitely a muscle. This idea that I am going into this. I'm putting my eggs into this basket. A lot of people always say that you shouldn't burn your bridges, you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. So I fervently disagree with that philosophy, but what I will say is a little warning that goes with that. Yes, burn your bridges. Yes, no, wait, burn your boats. Don't burn your bridges. That's being mean to people. I should burn my bridges. That's good for me. For you, it's probably not a good idea. Burn your boats, put all your eggs in one basket, but then carry the basket. You actually have to run to the fort after you burn your boats. Can't just sit around there and go, now what? Oh, I'm starving. What? I thought everything could just magically work out after that. Yes, it's very good, I think, to just go, there's no going back in your mind. This is where I'm going. And you just keep pushing through because it's incredible about the human spirit is that it will find a way regardless of its circumstances. In fact, that was the key distinction in Viktor Frankl's uh, Man's Search for Meaning. He was saying that the people that... Uh, ended up surviving the Holocaust, had one key trait in common. They didn't give up. They had a reason for staying alive. His was that he wanted to finish his psychology book, which ended up being that, I think, I can't remember. Look, it was a long time ago that I read it. Anyway, fuck him. He's dead now. Oh, brutal. But <laughs> he's like, I love Victor Frankl. I do. He's, he's honestly, it was an incredible book. You should read it. But the thing is that he was reading that, like, like he was noticing that in the camps, there was a dead giveaway. People gave away their cigarettes. They, sorry, they started smoking their cigarettes. Usually cigarettes could be used as a currency in that camp. So if you were smoking your cigarettes, you had made the decision in your head to die. But he was talking about all of these people that ended up surviving. They all had these insane survival stories of, I don't know, everybody dying and then them just hiding in a bunch of dead corpses and then waiting until the corpses went out and then crawling out of these dead bodies going, Ugh, oh, that's my mum. Maggots coming out of the mouth, keep going out, then running out into safety. All of them had all of these insane survival stories and it was because their brain was constantly searching on how do I get out of this? And when that happens, you start moving to that direction. And the difference is that your competition, your competition that you have, they are not thinking that. They are thinking a bunch of different things. First of all, they are focusing on comparison. And comparison just kills all joy that you have in life. Comparison will just give you this very petty mentality of they're there and I'm here. And it keeps focusing that into your mind. Over it, I deserve it because your mind is pretty much just saying, I deserve to be here. If you are just focusing on getting better at your skill and improving, then you do just get better at your skill and you start to improve. But it all starts with the decision that you are going somewhere. And I think that when that happens, people start sensing it. You will see a lot of people in your life that, let's just think of a nice word for them, losers. 
A lot of losers in your life, when you start going somewhere, you will see that they instantly repel to you. You don't even have to do anything. A lot of the time when people are asking me, how do I get rid of my friends? It kind of just happens naturally. A lot of the time, anyway. A lot of the time, all of your friends that are sitting around saying, hey, you want to smoke bongs? No. Oh, okay, I get what you want. You want to smoke a double cone piece, don't you? No. Well, I can't really help you here, dude. I'm doing the best I can. I was going to regale you with the the lessons in scar tissue, but you seem to want to, I don't know, go on jogs and oxygenate yourself. There's some oxygen that comes into the bong filter. Those people start moving to the side. You start moving into a different, going into a different direction. And the thing is that when you do that, winners are naturally attracted to you because they see that they're going somewhere and they go, oh, okay, I like hanging around people that are doing things. And then they start moving along with you as well. And this is another thing, if you are single, gentlemen, I've talked to this, so many women have been out there since. What's the quality that you find attractive in someone? You can show them anyone. Really what they are finding attractive is somebody who's good at what they're doing. And they can sort of intrinsically sense, I think that women are very good talent scouts. They definitely can t sense if a man is going somewhere or if they're not going somewhere. They can sort of see that stuff. Now that I'm a little older and I look at younger people, I think, yep, that person's going somewhere or no, that person's not going anywhere. I wasn't able to do it when I was younger. I would just be looking up to 28 year olds saying, yeah, you want to be like me, being a t-shirt manager at Mambo? What you should do is smoke blunts during work. Do that, just go out the back. Yeah, should I? Yeah, yeah, go do it, man. Oh, I can't believe you did it, you're fine. Pretty much a true story. And they have that aura around them. And when you start having that aura, I will, I will just go out and say it, things start naturally attracting to you. Things that you think, oh, okay, well, that's really weird that that was happening. Again, this is just that particular activation system thing coming into your head, which is that whatever you are focusing on, your brain just starts looking for those things because there's a billion things that you could possibly be focusing on right now, but it's only focusing on 10 or 12 things. Those 10 or 12 things it starts mapping out, and I guess that is the true magic of it. But way to spoil the fun. This is like every time I talk about horoscopes on my podcast and everyone gets angry at me. Can't I just talk about whatever the fuck I like to talk about? You guys give me money, sign up to Patreon today. This one and the podcast one as well, and the Friendly Geordies one. You're not done yet. Uh, yeah, it, it is that decision of moving into a direction. Just the pure act of deciding, okay, I'm gonna start doing that. You are not going to be as good at following that direction when you first start out as you will be in 10 years. You don't have the resources to begin with, but also you just don't have the concentration. You don't even know what the direction is. As I was saying in a previous video though, it doesn't matter. You just go on each step, next step, next step, next step, looking at whatever this step is in front of you. Like it's one of those video games like Zelda where you're in a dark level and you only just have that little torch in front of you. What a great metaphor that is. Yeah, that made us all feel peaceful and reminiscent, didn't it? And to all the gamer addicts there, made their hands chit up. I'm not gonna go. Now, you watch the next 10 minutes. I'm gonna try and get to the 10 minute mark just for the acronym. <laughs> so, if I can really wrap up this very simple message, it is that if you do not make the decision to be good at something, you will not be good at anything. And this is the other thing to all those commitment phobes out there. You can decide halfway through, I don't want to do this, and you can pick something else. The point is you have exercised that muscle. You have exercised the muscle of decision making. And once you make those decisions and you start burning your boats and saying, no, nah, that's the path I'm going to be taking, miracles start to happen. I can give you some examples from my stand-up experience, but I'm getting close to that 10 minute mark. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and sign up to my Patreon for more incredible ideas that you will not hear anywhere else except in the library, but I know that you can't be fucked to read those books. And we are out in 14. Okay, I'll give you one example. All right, no, one, one example, one example. That's not fair, that's not fair. When I was uh, starting out in stand-up, 
there was this new comedy room that was starting up that was uh, good. Most of them were terrible. And the thing was, I was just st randomly starting it, like, because there's so few comedy rooms in Sydney, you just have to wait three months, you go on stage, obviously you suck, and then you just go back into your little basement and go, oh, nobody laughed, even though there was 20 people there and they're all comedians and they don't want me to succeed anyway. But just weirdly on that one night, that one night, this guy that was starting up a new comedy venue that was very uh, well put together because he was a corporate type, he saw me perform and then he said, how about you go here? And so I did my little bit and then he said, come back next week. And I did my little bit and he was just like, that's great, come back again. And then we did corporate events and I started getting paid money. I, I was only seriously thinking about doing this. Like maybe, uh, maybe I was like six months into it. There was a bunch of other guys there that were doing it for 10 years, but were they really doing it? No, they were just saying that they're in comedy. They weren't actually in it. They weren't actually practicing. But I got that little leg up. As a result of that little leg up, I met a bunch of comedians who I still am in contact with today. One of them being Neil Cole Hacker. Neil Cole Hacker, one of the guys there. But again, he had that thing in him that was just like, I'm going somewhere. There was like that determination, that kind of aura around him that was just this idea of, look, doesn't matter that nobody knows who the fuck I am and I'm some scrawny little 18 year old. I am moving in some direction. And look at him now. He's somewhere. It's just that there's very few people that do this in life. There's very few people that just sit down and make the concerted effort. And because of that, you don't actually have much competition. You think that you have a lot of competition. You think that you're just constantly sitting there comparing yourself and saying, this person has this. It's really, that person has that because of a concerted effort and going along that direction path in life. And then a lot of things just start opening up to them. That's all up to you. Anyway, like the video, subscribe, sign up to Patreon.